All right, so in this episode, we're gonna be repairing this E63. This is a 2019 E63. So when I'm doing a car, I think of this car as if it was mine and how I would go about that repair. So you'll see a lot of guys online, they'll blend posts. They'll try to blend more of the car because their color isn't right. To me, that's not the way that I wanna fix a car. I wanna do the least amount of work to that car. That way it has all as much of the original paint. And this one here had gotten hit on the back of the trunk here. So it has a small repair that's needed on this lower part of this here trunk. So this is an aluminum trunk and then it took a shot to the bumper. So when you're doing these jobs, you wanna evaluate what is the best way to repair that job. That way you do not have to get into more painting. And uh, that's just my way of doing it. Maybe you guys have a way that you think is better. But to me, I wanna do the least amount of paint work. And on this job, we're gonna go ahead and repair this trunk. And we're gonna stay out of the top of this. That way the color is gonna be perfect to the original trunk as well as the quarter panel. So we are gonna have to replace the bumper. So we're gonna go ahead and get repairing on this one, get it repaired, get it back on the vehicle and uh, show you guys how nice it comes by doing it small and leaving as much of the OE on the job as you can. So we got my man George and he was showing me here on the outside of the bumper the damaged area you guys see there it's, it's got a pretty good amount of damage to the outside and that is what hit the reinforcement on the vehicle so not only is the outside damaged but we have the uh, tabs here where it actually clips onto the body of the vehicle are all broken so this is going to be changed out that way we can have a nice new bumper on it and we're not going to have to worry about trying to repair these tabs because we've got almost a whole top section of this with all the broken tabs on it and uh, you guys can see that there so this here is the reinforcement. This will be replaced. You guys see here, it has a dent in it from being hit from behind. So we'll get a new one of those. We'll get a new bumper and then we'll do the repair work on the trunk here. We're gonna go ahead and use our glue pull system from Kiko and show you guys, because you do not wanna weld on these panels. You wanna use glue and you wanna get this pushed out. That way you do not have any burnt paint on the inside and you don't have to worry about corrosion protection. All right, so I was telling you guys before about welding to the aluminum. We do have the machine to do that, and that there is the stud that it'll weld to that aluminum trunk because that is an aluminum truck for that Mercedes. So instead of doing that, we're gonna be using the Kiko system here. This is the glue pull, and this is a lot nicer because you do not burn the back of the panel. All right, so we were talking about doing the least amount of paint work as possible, but as we were going over this car, we noticed there was a dent on the top of the actual trunk. And you guys know we said we're gonna be just doing the lower. So the PDR guy happened to be here in the shop and we had him go ahead and take care of that dent. That way everything is looking clean and uh, we don't leave anything in the panel. All right, so we showed you the cleaners. That was in the pump bottle here. And then you guys seen the heat gun. So you wanna get that panel hot before you put the glue on it. That way you're gonna have your best adhesion and you gotta make sure that you clean it really well. And now that you have your glue on there, you're gonna want that to cool back down. So we're testing it and you'll hit it with your temp gauge and uh, let that panel cool down before you pull it because that glue has to harden up. That way you can get a good pull on it. So. All right, so we've got the trunk all primed up. You guys see we masked it off from the actual body line. So we're going to a factory seam. That way we're not gonna be doing any blending of the clear coat. So now that we've got it primed, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over 
and I wanted to show you guys here that we're taking the paint around the corner into the factory seam sealer line. That way it's nice and slick all around the bend where this is folded over from the outside of the trunk. So I want to have a continuous line of the clear coat, wrap it around all the way up. That way if you ever were to touch this, you don't have it back taped and you're able to have it nice and smooth. So I'll show you guys that now. We'll tape it right here to the seam sealer. We're gonna go ahead and scuff it up to that. That way, once we put it on the stand, I can wrap the clear coat right underneath the edge of this and have it all worn continuous nice if ever it was looked at very closely. And then uh, we've got the new cover here. It came in and uh, we're gonna get this scuffed down and then get him in the booth. We'll start working on the color. All right, so that's the trunk lid. And what we used on this one was a 400 on a small block because this has a lot of contours. It's really not flat. So we hit it with 400 with a small block. And then we went around it by hand with 600 grit. You guys seen that pad that I showed you with 600 with the scotch bright behind it. And then we finished up with the DA with 600 and then we cleaned it up final prep with the uh, K600 from Kovac. So that's the stages on the trunk lid. And then we went around the edge and re-hit that with the sky pad that we have good adhesion to this lip. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the bumper prepped out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get them cleaned up. And I wanted to show you one thing that you wanna try to do when you're doing body work and paint work is leave the primer on the repair. So if you guys see here, there's no body work being exposed here because the body work was done straight and we put enough primer on it. That way we do not have any exposed Bondo because when you break through the primer and then you have exposed Bondo, it's gonna be more porous than having it just nice in one even area of primer. So you have the chances of having it ring out later or even during the process of the painting on it. So you guys can see here that George did a beautiful job of the body work. That body line is nice and straight and it goes in arch with the way that this trunk is done. So when we did the body work on this one, being that we did the glue pull, we didn't have to grind it down to bare metal. We just roughed up the paint and went right over the top of the factory paint. That way everything is treated underneath the repair. So. That being said, we don't have to do anything on the inside of the trunk because we used glue and we didn't heat up that paint and burn the inside of the panel. So let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. All right, so now we're gonna check our color and this paint code is 992. We did a car a couple months back with the same color, actually the same car. So I'm familiar with this color, but I wanna follow through it with you guys exactly the way that it needs to be done if you're interested in learning this type of trade. So there are chips for that color, even though that that is 
a standard Mercedes color. There is variants for each color that you mix. There's not just one and it matches the car. So with this one here, we've got five different variants for that color, as well as some specials that PPG has that are from out in the field of us painters that had trouble and we verified that color, we got it right and we've sent it in to the lab and now they have specials for it. So let's go ahead and check the color to the vehicle. All right, so now we're gonna go over what you should do when you're checking a color. So as I told you guys before, we have five variants for this color. We have a lighter, we have a greener, we have a darker greener, a coarser, and a prime. So prime is the standard chip and usually every manufacturer will have their standard, their prime, and that's the one that they say is the most common and a lot of times it's not. So don't just think that you're gonna mix up prime and run with it because if you do that, you're gonna have a world of trouble. So what I like to do is I get my chips out and I look at them and you wanna look at them with a light, the sunlight, but you also wanna look at them without the light because sometimes if you don't, it could bite you. What I like to do now is start to eliminate the ones that I know aren't gonna be the ones. So these look a little light, so we'll go ahead and take them away. And then you'll start to see which ones look the best and you start to just hone in on which one you think it's gonna be. So we already know which one it's gonna be on this one because I've done this color before and I told you that I've already had this verified on this one. So I just wanna go through it with you guys and show you the process of it. So get your chips, start to eliminate the ones that don't look good. Make sure you check it with the light as well as without the light. And uh, that's the best outcome you're gonna have. So one thing that you do with the light is you put it in here, you put your chip up to it, and then you'll check the flop. So the flop is a different angle of the color and sometimes you'll maybe in traffic and you'll see somebody that has a bad blend on their car and that usually is the flop that's the metallics using the dark tone sometimes you'll look at that car straight and it'll look good and then you'll walk to the side of it and you'll start to pick up a dark spot and that is going to be the flop so you want to make sure that you look at it straight on you want to look at both angles from top bottom and both angles sideways to verify that you're good so All right, so that's gonna be good. And we did that to make sure that we mix the color right. That's one point that you wanna do. Even though you have a spray out card from prior, I like to mix up a new one every time. That way, in case they change the formula, because I have seen that PPG will change a toner out and then they won't update you and you'll have old spray outs and you won't know that they've changed something to do with the formula on it. So always do a spray out when you're not for sure on the color especially on something like this that you really have to do a nice job on. So we've got it dialed in. This color is going to be good. And uh, we're going to go ahead and finish up the job.
All right, so we've got two coats of clear on that one. We went ahead and used our normal 2021 clear. And uh, you guys see, we went on the inside. That way we can get that paint around the lip of the trunk. And it's gonna look OE when we're all done with it. So we're gonna go ahead, get it out of the booth, let my man George build it, and we'll show it to you guys all finished up. All right, so my man George got it all finished up. You guys seen him doing his thing again. He's my man for these builds and uh, he did a phenomenal job again. So we're gonna go ahead and show you the job all finished up in the shop. Then we'll bring it outside and show it to you out in the sun. All right, so let me know what you guys think of the job all finished up. And I really wanna know how you guys would have handled it at your shop. Would you have done the repair the same way by using a glue pull? Or would you went ahead and did the aluminum spot welder on it? And also, how much would you have painted on that job? So to me, I wanna keep as much of the OE paint on each job that I do. That way there's no detectable repair. And to me, the way we did the job was the right way to do the job. So let me know how you guys would have handled it. Give my man George a thumbs up on this one for doing a nice job on the repair as well as assembling the car. And we'll see you guys on the next one.